first we'll talk a little bit about the proposal that's been floating around to the board members. Then we'll have a, most likely a motion, and then we will open it up for public discussion, and then we will deliberate and make our decision. Okay. So that's our process that we plan on going through. Could we tilt the blinds behind you? It's yeah. We can't see your faces from kind of silver. Yeah, gotcha. I know the light's wonderful, but. Good idea. Thanks. Ah, tilt the lot? Yeah. Is that too much? No, perfect. Okay. Okay. Call the roll. So let me tell you what the proposal is. Would this is a. Oh. May we have the roll call? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> roll call, please. Director Doty? Here. Director Kiefer? Here. Director Swift? Here. President Turner? Here. Vice President Wayhay? Here. Thank you. Um, this is a proposal, and what started it was a, I had a long discussion with a, a taxpayer and a fellow finance person who kept telling me, you can lower that tax rate. You don't have to tax for 16 and a half months. You can tax for a shorter period of time. And then borrow money in the second year. So it has been suggested that we reduce the tax rate from 60 cents to 52 cents. The expenditures for 2014-15 would stay the same as we talked about in July 17th meeting. But our June 30th, 2015, a year from now, fund balance would be greatly reduced. The district would then not have enough money to operate the libraries from June 30th until November 15th, like we had earlier planned, and we would obtain a, a, a short-term financing, either a TAN, a taxable transaction, a, a letter of credit, some kind of financing for a short period of time. <coughs> until the taxes came in in 2015. Uh, I, after uh, finding out this information and, and applying it to the second year, I then uh, started talking <coughs> with a bond attorney, a financial consultant, and, and then actually a municipal banker, because most of the banking for municipalities is not done at a local level. It's all centralized in Portland and or Seattle. And all of them said in today's market, uh, a line of credit or a tax anticipation note is available. It would not probably be available this first year, nor do we need it this first year, because the county is able to upfront us the money and we pay them back in December after we have our property taxes. But the following year, you know, we need to be independent, or we're working towards striving to be independent. We we'll still have a cash flow need. And so, all this really does is lower the amount of property taxes for the first year and the second year. Well, on the first year. So, what it does then is if we levy at 60 cents the first year and then at 52 cents or lower level in the next year, you'll have more of a yo yo in tax rate. And this is a way of stabilizing the tax rate. Though we cannot predict, and nor will we know for sure, what that levy is for the following year. So we put a, together a number of numbers and a great deal of detail. And I don't know, I need to speak with my board to know if they need to know more detail and more numbers or whether, um, or how much detail I need to go in. So that's the concept behind what we're doing. I'd like to move that we approve your proposal um, as, it, as it exists and then move to discussion. I second the motion. Director Doty? Oh, no, no we didn't talk for a question. Yeah. question. So this discussion. So let me just go back through a little bit of the detail. Okay. If we <coughs> levy at 52 cents, we would collect about $8.1 million this year, and we would earn approximately $14,000 in interest income, which would give us about $8.1 million, oh, $8.14 million of proceeds. 
And our operating budget with the county on a net basis, because that's what our proposed contract is on a net basis, it is about $5.6 million. We have about $130,000 worth of additional expenses such as elections, professional expenses, attorney, insurance, uh, travel, you know, things that are related to being a new independent government entity. And our, we have earlier decided that we wanted to have some enhanced hours of approximately a half million dollars. With a 5% contingency, our fund balance would be $1.5 million dollars with a goal of $2.5 million, so we, or 2.46, so we're approximately $900,000 short at the end of the first year. And from having enough money to last us till November. And so what we would do then is have enough money to last us, most, most likely we'd have cash flow for July and for August, but we wouldn't have enough money to last us all the way through to the end of until we get taxed. And so at that time, we'd be like another little business and we'd go to the bank and say we have some cash flow and we promise we'll pay you back with property taxes. And come on up. That's been done many, many times in, in, in <coughs> small districts especially that have this cash flow need. And it's initially, if you kept it at 52 cents, most likely it would take us maybe several years of borrowings before before it, it uh, we would stop doing that. But our intent would not to be to borrow money every year, but to work ourselves out of it slowly. And so that's what my proposal is. I have seen lots of different proposals uh, since that time, and I've heard lots of good in public input, and so any more, dis let's have some discussion about it. Um, uh, Director Swift, um, could you explain a little bit more the fund balance goal of four and a half months of revenue, just to so that, that that's a little bit clearer? Well, one of the things we have, as a board have not had a huge discussion around, though it's been inferred, is that the, that's four and a half months worth that at the end. It, 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 once we're up and running, that at the end of the fiscal year, not at, not, not at any particular time, but at, at June 30th, we would always have enough money to get us till um, uh, November. November 15th. And so what that fund balance goal in my calculations is, is four and a half months worth of expenditures. Mm -hmm. So in other words, by the time property taxes came in, then you would have enough money. So it's a it's a cash flow problem, and so mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to solve by getting a short term loan. Monica, oh excuse me, that's yeah, direct your way. You don't have to be that formal. Okay, I mean, it's mm -hmm. fine. <laughs> um, so I and I know others spent a lot of hours running numbers yesterday. I mean, I spent basically a full day running numbers at different property rate scenarios and different details on the expenditure side especially, um, of course, to go with the revenues. And my initial concern was that this was too low and not doable, but after spending all day running numbers, <coughs> I am convinced that this is a doable plan and um, by having contingency and some leeway on um, how much enhanced hours and services we implement at what point in time throughout the year. Um, I'm convinced, again, after many, many hours of running numbers, that this would work at 52 cents with Jill's proposal for a tax anticipatory note or, or a line of credit. And I, and it may not need to be that long, you know, a, a, a year or two may do it, even less depending on, on those various factors, how much contingency we actually set aside and and how we implement enhanced hours and services throughout the year. So um, that's why <laughs> I support this proposal now, because I spent a long time working on it. We didn't talk much about this on the 17th of July, and that was a disappointment to me, <clears throat> because I had figured out already that it was going to take 52 cents for us to repay the county. 
um, the amount of money that we were owing the county. Um, that $2.5 uh, million is almost exactly what the county is charging us in addition to the 12, the 12 months. Uh, they're asking us to repay them $2.2 million, and they could have actually given us that because they were already budgeted to give us more. Five, they were given, they were budgeted to give us $5.6 million for this year. But it doesn't matter. That figure, though, the public needs to understand that figure of fund balance goal was $2.2 million for this year to get to repay the county for those four and a half months. And I think that's important information to, to put forward. Officer Wahey. I'm board member. Thank you. I guess I just wanted to mm -hmm. clarify and repaying the county. Um, that's just ref that's not referring to a bill per se. That's referring to um, the the front of property tax dollars. Exactly. Okay. <coughs> And, and in, in doing this, you do incur some costs when you borrow money in the second year. And I want to say publicly, because the county is allowing us to defer the payment, we saved those costs this year. Yeah. And the calculation that we came in, it's probably twelve to $15,000 worth of cost in that second year. Mm -hmm. Monica, do you have any? Additional comments? That would be me. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me, Marie. No. Okay. No, I think I'm good with what I've seen here. Susan? Um. Okay, so what I would like to do is open it up for public comment then. And what I'd like to do is have a show of hands of how many people are, are wanting to talk. Okay? And uh, normally what you do is you have a little table here so that you can ask the people to come forward. What I'm going to ask you to do is to stand up, state your name and your address, and um, uh, limit your comments to, to uh, three minutes, and Lisa will time you, and it will sound terrible when it does go off. <laughs> and, and you need to be talk limited to the t property tax proposal that we're talking about. I must say, uh, we're always getting great ideas, and I'm very thankful for my friend that came up to me and said, do this, do this, consider do this, why don't you do this? You know, those are the ways that we learn more about making our government better. So I'm really anxious to hear about the public comment that you guys will have here. And so, can I have, why don't we start at one the gentleman in the back who's standing, I'll call on you first. I'm Anton Peterson at 4269 Grant Road. I feel that the whole thing should be scrapped. And I'll tell you why. All this cost and all the things that you're talking about now was never presented to the public before a vote. Nobody got the idea that it was going to be this way and all the expenses behind it. I don't know what you're spending for personal uh, people who work for the library or yourselves. I don't know what you're intending on paying them. All of this was not brought out to anything in the public. It's kind of like the Obama thing. Lie to them, and then once it gets passed, then we find out all the costs and expenses. I think the whole thing should be scrapped and started all over again and a vote made on the basis of everything. Salaries, cost to the county, the whole works. This was never brought out. Thank you for your comment. Okay, can I have one another person? This lady right here, Betty Katzman, is second on the list. Okay. Did I pronounce it Can correct? Stand up? Yes, please. Okay. First, I commend you for reconsidering decisions that I believe were made <coughs> too hurriedly. Um, <laughs> Betty, can you start with your name, name and address? You just said it. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So Betty Kasman, I live on, on um, Jessica Circle. I mean, do I have to announce my street address? No, okay. uh, in Medford. And I'm a loyal library supporter, and I commend you all for reconsidering decisions that I believe were made too hurriedly. Um, 
I'm real interested that you listed all these people you have been consulting with other than your 200 an hour lawyer. And I do wonder why you did not start out first getting free legal advice before you hired the lawyer. I wonder how much he's costing. Okay, I had a letter published just a month ago in the Mail Tribune, and I'd like to read a little small portion of it. I'm an old school teacher. If I were still teaching, I would ask students to consider this. If the county this year had added seven, has added $17 million to its reserves and was prepared to spend over $5 million on the library system, plus an additional 800000 lottery grant that would normally be used for library expenses, how much of that should now be given to the newly created, unfunded library district? Are commissioners truly looking out for the taxpayers by not releasing the lottery money? I think that's an important question. Um, will the library district board now have to ask for the full amount, which is what we did a month ago? Imagine a robust class discussion on how elected officials promote the good and welfare of its citizens. A math meets civics lesson. I wonder if students might agree that by allowing the library district to keep the 800000 lottery grant as a startup gift, the county commissioners could indeed benefit all of us who support our libraries. Thank you. Patsy Ashley? <coughs> Pat Ashley. Pat Ashley. Yes, I too want to commend the, uh, the group on reconsidering the 60 cent levy. Uh, oh, excuse me, my address is on, I'm, I live in Eagle Point. Uh, I would rather not give out my address. Um, I do want to commend you on that. I would like you to reconsider ours as quickly as possible because um, in, the, in the overall budget, I realize that that's a major element. And um, we feel in our area that there are, there are other uh, places in the county that need extra hours as well as those who already have them. And perhaps a, a more uh, equal distribution uh, would be advisable. Our, our, our next person is Wright Kieran. Kieran is Kieran. the last name. Okay. Wright is my first name, and I live in Rouge. And I do appreciate you speaking with me at some length after the last meeting. I am very happy that you've decided to call this special meeting and reconsider your original proposal, which I think was hurriedly composed. So I guess that's good news that you're at least thinking about different ways to do things, and you are somewhat responsive to the citizenry. There's still big questions that are in my mind. You mentioned enhanced services, and as a general proposition, I would say, wouldn't it make sense for a brand new library board, starting from ground zero, having to start from behind the starting line in terms of cash flow, in terms of when the monies will first come in? Wouldn't it make a lot more sense to keep things as they are now in terms of the county supply, what was formerly the county supplied hours to each library? Why do we immediately need to go to enhanced hours? Why do we not find out first how to run the basic operation before we go and extend ourselves, which obviously costs more money? Now, I have some very strong concerns about how hours are determined at each library, and I'm willing to be corrected on my understanding. But, let me start out. First of all, isn't it true? Well, I think we'll have to talk about that at our next meeting. We're going to be talking about how enhanced services and how they will be. Well, I, I, okay. as I alluded to you at the last time, my initial impression is, and I'm willing to be corrected, okay. is right now there's some kind of reverse Robin Hood scheme going on where libraries that formerly got special extra funding from the, the local area that said, yes, we want more hours than the library district normally would provide, will give you some extra money to run some extra hours. That's how Ashland has 40 hours, whereas the Medford Main Library only gets 24. Isn't that correct? That's correct. Yeah. And, you did allude, and you did allude that the three entities, 
no longer want to fund that extra money. Is that correct? There are seven entities there. Seven, okay. And some of them have said yes, and some of them have said no. Okay. okay. So it's also my belief that you set, you're now saying that the new library board should provide those extra hours no longer at the expense of the individual communities that voted to, pay, to levy themselves to pay for those extra hours. Is that still the case? Well, I'm here to get your comments, and I'm not going to here to debate you. In okay, this well, if that's part of the 52 cents, I'm against it. Maybe it should be less. My main message is walk before you run. Thank you. Can I add myself to this? Yes, you can add. There's a list right over there. And I'm going to call next on Joel Marks. Thank you. First, I'd like to say um, I'm very glad at the, del the, the deliberative process that you have taken. I am also uh, very glad about the public comment during the period before you make any decision. That's very good. And I'm, I'm glad to see that, that change. Um, I'm a little bit concerned, as Wright has said before, about the budget. Now, zero-based budgeting is a good way to budget. You start from scratch and you say, do we need this? Do we need 15 libraries? Um, I don't know if we need 15 libraries. I'd like to hear the <coughs> arguments about that. I personally don't think we do. Uh, so if you don't need 15 libraries, I talked to uh, Commissioner Bridenfeld just before I walked into this meeting to ask him what he thought the levy should be because he's testified before that it should have been 42 cents. Now he says it should be 52 cents, as you are saying. So I'm sure that the county and the library board have been talking about this. Um, but I said to Commissioner Bryan, thought, well, 52 cents, how do you know? Without knowing exactly what you want to do with the budget. And the budget is about the same as what you got from the county. So I think that needs to be explored a little bit, uh, what the exact amount should be, though I'm grateful that you've reconsidered. Um, I don't have, I have a healthy distrust for government, whether it's the county or whether it's the library board, not you in particular, but government, the way it operates. Uh, the county has to have their money, and whatever that money is needs to be understood by the public as well. Uh, last week you were concerned about what the county was getting uh, through a contract, and the attorney uh, discussed that, I think, a little bit. Uh, I am also concerned about that, and we have a, you have a great opportunity to right a wrong that you had before, but thank you for the deliberative process, and thank you for allowing the public to have their say. Okay, our next speaker is Michelle Atkinson. Is that I think I got that right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, just, just. Um, my name is Michelle Atkinson, and I live in Medford. Uh, first, I just... I'll make this quick, but I'd like to take a moment and reflect that uh, what an amazing thing it is that we're all here and that I think almost everyone in this room had something to do with uh, keeping the libraries open. That, you know, we could have been in a situation that is very sad right now. Um, and that would have hurt the community both economically and intellectually. So I think we should celebrate. Um, <laughs> The reason I got into this, and what I think is very important, is that we serve the community in uh, the amount of hours that the library is open. Uh, that is one of the initial reasons that this even began, um, is that the community really wanted um, more hours um, and to keep the library open. Uh, I, I hope that you know, we can all work together as people, um, that it's not us versus the county versus, you know, anyone else, that we're all in this trying to help the community, trying to help the library. Um, I have a six-month-old daughter. We go to story time, so I'm very happy that the library is open. I would like more hours, 24 hours in that Uh It isn't a lot, but I understand that you have to create a rate that the community can stand behind. Uh, so if it's 60 cents, I think I would expect a lot more hours. If we can get more services for 60 cents, I wouldn't mind. 
Um, I would be willing to pay that amount to get more hours, more services. Um, and I, I don't know if that's the general consensus. Uh, but if we do pay more, I would love more hours. If we're paying 52 cents, I guess I understand that uh, that would be hard to do right away. Um, as long as it's maybe the long term goal is to get more hours, and that maybe a, at some point we can start serving um, those more hours, that's what I would like. Thank you. Okay, uh, my next speaker is Kathy Shaw. Can I? Go later. Is there anybody uh, well, else? Well, I think I only have one more person. Yeah. No, I signed up. Okay. I was okay, just five or six. There's, there's a couple of more people down here. Because I may not need to speak. I have. Oh, Chris Durham. Oh, sorry, Chris. I I skipped over you. I'm thank sorry. you. Thank you. I appreciate the meeting today, and you're uh, taking the opportunity to rethink what I believe was a gross error. My name is Chris Durham. I live in Medford. I'm also a library volunteer, have been for about six years. Uh, I'm here to really campaign against uh, even a 52 cent rate. Uh, and I'm, going, I'm suggesting to you that allocating additional funds for additional library hours to Ashland and a few other libraries without considering the entire county's needs is unconscionable. There isn't even a budget at this point, so such allocation of funds, approximately a half a million dollars, is being done blindly and without thought for how those funds may be needed across the county. All communities in Medford have a right to their share of the allocation of additional funds to expand the hours of their libraries, that their libraries are open. After all, all property taxpayers are footing the bill for the library in the county now. There's no justification in my mind for increasing previously county funded library hours in any branch until an analysis of all branch libraries is completed and a thoughtful and fair distribution of funds is made. Libraries and communities who in the past taxed themselves or were fortunate enough to have benefactors to pay for additional library hours may, of course, continue to do so. Why the new library district would automatically now use the library district tax revenue to replace those local contributions for additional hours while leaving the majority of the other libraries at their previous minimal hours, such as Medford, the largest city in the county with only 24 hours, while Ashland's being allocated funds for 40 hours, is totally unjustifiable. I urge you to reverse the decision to spend any library tax district base funds on increasing any branch library hours until a study of the entire county library system needs are assessed and equitably funded if funds become available. I'd like to remind you of your little campaign pin that said libraries for all. It doesn't say libraries for all plus special treatment for some. I want to thank you all for reconsidering what I also consider an ill-conceived increase in the tax rate. Um, I agree with many of the comments. First of all, to clear up a few misconceptions, um, none of you are being paid, is that correct? Absolutely. Right. So there are no salaries involved, just so the public understands right. that. Uh, I too feel it is extremely unfair to pick up Ashland's uh, hours when, as a prosperous community, they elected to pay for these extra hours. <coughs> I also agree with the man who said, you need to walk before you run. I don't believe any of you have had the experience of running a business, a corporation. Certainly, you have not had any experience in running a library board. So my suggestion <laughs> is that you keep the status quo for one year. During that year, you study all the issues. You study the needs of the different people, the different communities. I'm a long-term member of the Central Point Friends of the Library and a resident of Medford. Both of these libraries have a huge reading population, a huge uh, client base. They are, they are crowded every day. 
and they need more hours. Ashley, if they want to continue to pay for those 40 hours, wonderful. It's nice to know that there are people who can afford that. We cannot. That is about all I had to say. Thank you. Mary Lou Schnows. Schnows. Okay, thank you, Mary. Mary Lou Schnows. I have a Center Point address, and I'm speaking just for myself as an individual. And I want to thank you all for donating your valuable time for so long to be unpaid board members. And obviously, some members of the public are rather ungrateful. <laughs> Sorry. But some others of us are very interested in how things are run, but we don't even write a letter to the county commissioners. We don't even show up at the hearing the county commissioners had a couple weeks ago to stop funding the library. And I and one other person who's not here were the only members of the public at that hearing. I hear people talk about how the county should continue to uh, help the library out, but this is not the audience. The county commissioners are the audience that need to hear that. The other respectful thing we should all do is silence our cell phones. Thank you. Do we have anyone else other than... Okay. Well, no, you've already spoke. I'm going to call on Kathy Shaw as our finally pers final person here. So, um, I just... Please I, stand. I, I'm sorry. I know we've di diverged a little bit. Ashland, Oregon, Catherine Shaw, 886 Oak Street. I know we've diverged a little bit from your initial requis requisite that we stay on the topic of the 52 cents per thousand. But I'm compelled to, as long as everybody else is, I'm compelled <laughs> to address some of the issues that have fallen before the board. First of all, the animosity that exists due to geographic location I think is all founded in our county. The um, Ashland City Council, the Ashland Mayor, the Ashland Administration is more than willing to pick up the additional hours and the money that has been established for additional hours in Ashland. That has not ever, it's not as though it's been pulled off. Other communities have pulled it off. <coughs> it's, it's actually written within their uh, existing language that once any other funding mechanism passes, that money automatically goes away. That leaves the board with a very difficult decision in terms of how you make up some hours but don't make up others. I've heard addition, uh, continually that people say, we need to leave everything as it is, and that's exactly what they've done. They're leaving everything as it is. It's not that Ashland has more money to pay for this, if you look at the 2000 census, the 2010 census, the 1990 census, some of the poorest neighborhoods in Jackson County reside in Ashland. Because Ashland chooses to pay for additional services does not necessarily indicate they have additional funds to do so. They just choose to do so. So let's not banter about one area versus another area. I think that's inappropriate. We all live in Jackson County and we all are, you know, urging for similar and equitable treatment for the libraries. If you want to get into the discussion, we can get into the discussion about what we pay in property taxes, what property reach value, the value of homes, what my home, a small house, is valued at, and how much I pay in taxes versus a small home, and let's say, let's say Rouge. So you can say, oh, gee, we need to make this all even, but if you wanted to get down into the weeds, it becomes a very cumbersome process. So this board, this volunteer board, decided that they would just keep everything as it is. <coughs> All they're discussing now is what millage they need to leverage to do just that. As to the gentleman in the back that says that we somehow left out information, I will tell you that on the web page, in all literature, in the voters' pamphlet, in a television <coughs> advertisement, the amount that was advertised was 60 cents per thousand. At no time, contrary to the Medford Mail Tribune's incessant rattling about this issue, at no time did anybody within the library campaign, <laughs> within the library campaign, ever say that it would be less than 60 cents per thousand. That was on every single piece of literature. Thank you. Can I make an additional comment? Then? No. 
Do we have any other persons in the in the audience that wish to speak? And if so, can you stand and give me your name, please? Yes, my name is Brad Inman. I live in East Medford, and I want to thank you all for your service and your expertise and your dedication to this program that the county unfortunately has imposed on us. Um, eloquent comments from everybody. Uh, I won't repeat them. I agree with virtually everything that's been said. I would add just one comment. Borrowing money makes most people feel flush and encourages them to spend money and commit money that they don't have and won't have. It is a slippery slope. Be careful that you do not kick the can down the road and face a problem two years from now that should have been solved this year. Not today necessarily, but this year. I applaud you for reneging on the 60 cent thing uh, to put in balance your uh, pre-election promises. I don't know what the numbers ought to be, but base budgeting is important. Keeping things at a, a, as low a cost keel as you can to start out with, to make sure you have things under control, give you time to deliberate, to decide hours and locations and all the other cost aspects of the district are important. I caution you not to borrow money unnecessarily. It's dangerous. Always has been. Our history in this county is, with respect to the libraries, is not good. And we have an opportunity now, you have an opportunity now, and I encourage you to take the opportunity and try to stabilize <coughs> what we're doing with the libraries. Thank you very much. Okay, let's have some discussion at the board level then. So, do we want to discuss any further? I, I thank everybody for speaking and we, I did listen. Uh, I still stand by my day's worth of calculations yesterday um, and will support 52 cents. I believe that the short-term loan or line, line of credit will be very short. I, I appreciate admonitions about borrowing. I think the only time I've borrowed money is to buy a house. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a borrower. Um, we will monitor it closely. We take our fiduciary responsibility very seriously. I concur and I hope that this group keeps attending our meetings because we have some, I think, pretty practical uh, things to take care of in the future. And certainly the next few meetings um, will be, be very important. So I hope we have a, this kind of attendance ongoing. That will be very positive from my perspective. <coughs> How do we get hold of you? Do you have a website? Do you have any comments? No, I'm the process I'm, of saying something. No, I'm I concur with the comments of the other board members. I'm concerned about borrowing money. I think it's equity across the county is very important. It's high on our list. I, we have every intention of making sure that the libraries across the county get equal treatment. And we hope to provide the best library service we could want from this board. And I think we can get a good start at 52 cents per cent. For me, I think we have to make decisions. And our decisions is how do we use our taxpayer money wisely. And I think we can build a program over time to have a better library program that we can, than, than what we have today. And that's ultimately what I think the voters wanted, was better libraries. I believe that we're doing the right thing at this point. Um, I think that 
certainly I agree with the concept of borrowing being potentially dangerous, and I think that we've got enough um, people involved in this that will keep an eye on that, if not us, others. Um, and I don't expect it uh, to go much more than the first few years um, as I've been looking at the numbers. Um, I think that um, as we move forward, uh, we have been tasked by the voters uh, to run a library district um, and a system that provides um, access across the board to the people of the county in an equitable fashion. Um, that may not be happening today, it may not happen tomorrow, but it is our goal. It is something we are going to look at. Um, there's a lot of stuff that isn't going to happen tomorrow that would be ideal, um, but it is on the table, it will be discussed. We'll look at it in conjunction with our responsibilities to also keep within our budgets. Um, so I think that this is a good start for us uh, to be re-looking at this uh, with a little bit more clarity and a little bit more precision. Um, and I expect that as we go down the road that our ability to be more precise about these things will certainly be enhanced. Um, we started out with a little bit of a handicap in that regard. Uh, but I do think that over the next year we'll have the opportunity to overcome that. I call for the question. The question has been called for, so I guess we'll have a vote. Roll call, please. Director Wehe? Yes. Director Swift? Yes. Director Kiefer? Yes. President Turner? Yes. Director Doty? Aye. And so I was, can I have a clarification? Was that a, 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 a resolute, a motion to, what was the motion, I think? Well, I, I moved that we approve the proposal, so I will also move mm -hmm. that you execute the resolution 2014-003, which is actually a, a change in the, in the resolution that we adopted on the, 7th of, on the 17th of July. You need um, to specify what the, the rate, rate is. will be 52 cents per thousand, and it will be effective uh, July 1, okay. Okay. July 1, 2014. Can we have another roll call with that, please? Now we have it with specificity. I'm, I'm sorry, can, can I'll you? second and the attorney call for a roll call. Attorney so call Carol for made a motion that we mm -hmm. would approve resolution 2014-003 with a tax rate at 52 cents, repealing our earlier tax rate of 60 cents. Correct. And Monica second to that. Do we have any discussion? I'd like to have a roll call vote on that, please. Roll call vote. Vice President Wehe? Yes. But Director Swift? Yes. Director Kiefer? Yes. President Turner? Yes. Director Doty? Yes. Could I make a suggestion before we adjourn? That is that we make an announce when our next meetings are and what, to the extent that we know them, the agendas for those meetings. I think that would be helpful since we have quite a cadre of people here. Our today. next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, August 27th, 3 p.m. at the Central Point Library meeting. And the Central Point Library, uh, uh, earlier that day, we will be taking a tour of some facilities. So we'll end at 3 o'clock. The purpose of that agenda will be to discuss uh, the contract with the county and hopefully approving it. What about the first Thursday of the month? Then our next meeting, will be, it will be a special meeting for that purpose only, I think. On the 27th. And, and then on the first meeting in... Our normal meeting time will be the first Thursday of every month at 9 o'clock in, in this building. And I don't know if it's this, this room. room. Okay. This room. Okay, this mm -hmm. room in this building. Mm -hmm. What time on the 22nd again? 27th. 27th. 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. And the Thursday meeting in September is always at 9 o'clock. And what is going to be on the agenda that we know about already in terms of I, 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 report I from... Pretty much. It's still premature at this point. Well, the library doesn't have a proposal. It's premature.
Yeah. Okay. Uh, what time was the meeting on the 27th, please? 3, 3 p.m. 3, 3 p.m. And the following meeting is I think we stand adjourned. And you don't have to take the party. <laughs> yeah, <we're sending> <laughs>